This week on 49ers Cal High Sports Report presented by U.S. Bank, we're deep into the playoffs with some huge matchups this week. We'll see Wilcox battle Sarah, Liberty meets Pittsburgh, and Hayward takes on Los Lomas. Our exclusive series this season with Valley Christian football continues as the Warriors meet co-league champ St. Ignatius. We have state volleyball finals from Southern California's Kemp Belindo goes for a state title. NorCal finals from water polo and the story of the McClyman's football star and how he's helping out his family after tragedy. It's all next on 49ers Cal High Sports Report. Welcome to 49ers Cal High Sports Report presented by U.S. Bank. I'm Robert Bronstein. And I'm Aubrey Tolliver. We begin this week in the NCS Division IV bracket where the 9-2 Ocalanus Dons face the 10-1 Marin Catholic Wildcats. Marin Catholic coming off a great first-round performance by running back Mateo Perez who had six touchdowns last week. The Dons' Lucas Eppinger had three catches and a touchdown to go over 1,000 yards receiving in the Dons' opening round win. Ocalanus at Marin Catholic. Saturday afternoon. North Bay sports coverage is brought to you by South County Chrysler of Marin. A spot in the NCS D4 final on the line, Aqualon is at Marin Catholic. A defensive first half, end of the first quarter, Joey Carrillo makes a big stop for Aqualon is to hold the Wildcats. Don's trying to get something going. Brady Hutchinson looks and spins around to create some distance, firing to Lucas Eppinger, who makes the catch. A 31-yard pass gets to Don's downfield, but the Wildcats keep them scoreless. Two minutes left in the half, and the Don's back in possession. Marin Catholics, Gavin Cook leaps and intercepts the pass. He runs it back to get the Wildcats in great field position. They make the most of it. Next play, Michael Ingracia hands it off to Mateo Perez, weaves in and out of traffic and all the way down the sideline into the end zone. Marin Catholic gets on the board. It was an all defensive second half. Joey Carrillo lunges again, three sacks and 10 tackles for the big man. Marin Catholic's defense sparkled all game, shutting out their tough opponent. Final couple minutes of the game and the Dons fighting. It's Jamar Sakona with the dagger. Sakona committed to USC next year. But first, he and the Wildcats move on to the NCS Division IV Championship after the 7-0 win. Oak Grove taking on Palo Alto CCS Division II semifinal game. Elias Herrera for Oak Grove takes a handoff, finds a lane, cuts up field, toes the line, and then finds the end zone. The Eagles flying high early, 6 to nothing, but we had a long way to go. Now it's the defensive's time to shine. Luis Barber says, Gimme takes this one to the house, and before you can find your seat, it's 13 to nothing. Oak Grove Eagles after the pick six. The Vikings answer right back, though. Danny Peters, simple short completion to Jameer Shepard, and there's nothing simple about what happens next. Shepard hits another gear. See ya, 83 yards to pay dirt. The Vikings get on the scoreboard. It's 13 to 7. And then a block party. Kevin Cullen blocks the punt. Ball rolling into the end zone. Cullen finishing the job. Diving on it. Great play there. It's 14-13 Vikings. Now Palo Alto up 24-13 after one. Eagles climbing right back in it. Malik Sumler bouncing to the outside. A ferocious touchdown run there. The Eagles score again to take a two-point lead, but the Vikings get that lead right back. Peters to Hunacio Henley, who almost gets in. The Vikings score on the next play. The lead is theirs, 30-26. to Vikings try to increase the lead, but Elias Herrera says, no, sir. He picks it off, and that was a huge play. So Herrera gets the pick. It's only right that he follows it up with this Herrera touchdown run. What a game for Herrera. Eagles on top 32-30. Late in the fourth, Malik Sumler. One more time. He must want some dessert because this is the icing on the cake. Oak Grove goes on to win it. The Eagles advancing to play the winner of Los Gatos Sacred Heart Prep. Highlights of that one later in the show. Campbellino Cougars getting fired up for the NorCal D1 final game against San Ramon Valley. Cougs up 1-0 in the first. Soren Jensen heaves it to Ben Larson, who lobs it in for the goal 2-0 Campo. But the Wolves erase the deficit. Miles Murdo with the pass to Holden Nietzsche fights off a defender and scores. Both teams with two goals after one. Second quarter, Wolves take the lead. Wyatt Mundelli is firing it off the post and deflecting in for the goal. The Cougars answering back. Brock Zemanian finds an open Tom McGuire who rockets it in to tie it up at three. A Ben Larson catch and shoot goal. Campolindo takes the lead and starts to pull away. In the third, McGuire to Jensen. Campo outscoring SRV three goals to one in the third. 
But in the fourth, down by four, the Wolves looking to close the gap. Joey Protenic puts one on the board, and SRV would pull within two, but the Campbell goalie, Wes Temkin, wearing number 1A, uses his fingertips to save the shot. Campbellindo wins its first CIF NorCal title with important performances from Jensen and goalie Temkin. Each week, we present the Players of the Week in a wrap produced by the Hip Hop Department at the Rikers Center. Here are this week's Players of the Week. Yeah, uh -huh. Rikers Center, uh. the Players of the Week. B. Jada on the beat, uh, uh, Rama uh. Jamal, yo. Talk about climbing an uphill mountain. A first round win for the Foothill Falcons. Yep. In the playoffs against San Leandro. We're sweeter than the skin of a candied apple. With quarterback Bryce Lombardi at the helm. And 213 yards captured on film. 11 for 15 passes, four total touchdowns. Looks like the Falcons are going uptown. While we're going on a water polo. Where opponents leave with backs hunched like Quasimodo. Thanks to Sacred Heart Preps goalie Griffin Price. He must have been a Brick wall in a different life. They won seven to five. He has 17 saves like St. Peter bouncing at the heavenly gates. Winning their ninth consecutive CCS title. With gators in the water, their slim chance of survival. Uh, Riker Center, Rama Jamal. Yeah. These are your players of the week. 49 of Cal High Sports Report. Stanford Healthcare brings us great information on sports related injuries every week. Here's the 49ers head team physician, Dr. Timic Adams, with this week's tip. Most of you have heard of Magnetic Resonance Imaging, or MRI, which is an outstanding tool to evaluate injuries to your soft tissues. Another great tool that is increasingly utilized in sports medicine is ultrasound. It is not only cheaper than MRI, but has excellent resolution, is painless and safe, and can aid in injections or aspiration of fluid. We commonly use ultrasound at the 49ers to aid in diagnosis of degree of muscle or tendon injury, and to assist in return to play decisions. We can even bring portable ultrasound with us when traveling to other cities. Keep ultrasound in mind as an imaging option. It may even save you a trip to the MRI scanner. Coming up, it's the Diablo Motors CCS Monster Game, the Division I semifinal game with Sarah and Wilcox. And action from the state volleyball title game in Southern California. Yeah, I'm looking at the numbers now. You sure I can do this? Yeah, it's what we've been planning for. Thank you. Hey, boy. Hey, you know how I said I've been working on something big, right? Sure. This house is officially yours. You own it. At U.S. Bank, we believe oh. hard work works. That's the look. And our integrated approach to wealth management helps make sure your money keeps working as hard as you do. The legends of the gridiron meet the legends of the road. I'm Debo. Touchdown, Debo Samuel. And I got my role on it, and no one dies dealing in the world. South County, where they call the fairest place. Come get your roll on just like I did. Drive a little, save a lot. Tell them Debo sent you. South County, drive a little, save a lot. Tell them Debo sent you. Cal High Sports Report is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Tri-Counties Bank, service with solutions. 12 locations now open in the Bay Area. By DGDG.com, where we want you to be a happy car buyer. And by Diablo Motors, life's too short to drive a crummy car. We are back at Levi Stadium with the CCS Division I semifinal game with the Wilcox Chargers taking on Sarah, the De Anza Division champion Chargers winning a thrilling overtime game in the first round last week. Sarah earned a share of the West Catholic League title and last week won their first round game in a battle with Half Moon Bay. It's our Diablo Motor CCS monster game and our Wesley Boone was there. Monster game. Yeah. Nothing like some postseason football 
It's the Wilcox Chargers preparing to take on the Sarah Padres with a spot in the CCS Division I final on the line. For the Padres, Terrence Laville, he's having a stellar season. The three-star recruit is averaging 20 yards per reception. He's a playmaker to watch. With the Chargers, their one-two punch of Paul Rosa and Isaiah Flores have a combined 2,500 yards and 26 touchdowns. It's the Wilcox Chargers taking on the Sierra Padres in our Diablo Motors monster game. The winner of this game gets to take on the winner of Valley Christian St. Ignatius. Chargers get the Padres off the field and then get to work. Paul Rosa, rumble, young man rumble, breaks through an arm tackle. Looks like he may go the distance. Finally brought down, but not before a 55-yard gain. And to cap the drive off, who else but Rosa? Powering his way in, touchdown Wilcox. Chargers up seven to nothing. Later in the second, Padres answer. Dominique Lampkin rolling to his right, delivers a strike to Nate Sanchez. This game knotted up at seven at the half. To the third quarter we go, Chargers driving, but the ball squirts out. Nusi Milani scoops it up at the bottom of the pile, and the Padres make the most of the turnover. Hand off to Hassan Mahasin. Look at the lane. Too easy. Mahasin puts Sarah up 13-7 in the third quarter, and he wasn't finished. Takes the flip pass from Lampkin. This is going to go down as a touchdown pass, but Mahasin doing all of the work here. It's 20-7 Padres. Late in the fourth now, Wilcox trying to stage a comeback. Pass looks to be deflected, but the refs say it wasn't a forward pass. This is a fumble, folks. Malaki Hoeft is the only one who realizes it. He scoops it up. Touchdown, Padres. Chargers would score again with under a minute left, but it doesn't matter. Sarah gets the win. Here's Lampkin after the game. I felt the first half was going a little slow, but you know, as you continue on, we just put the pep in our step and just kept going on. From San Mateo, Wesley Boone, 49ers Cal High Sports Report. The Lowell Cardinals going for the Division III state title against South Pasadena. Kaylee Bumanglag to Gabriella Quach to Eliana Brown, and the sophomore crushes it for the point. Lowell playing well on both sides. Watch Alina Chi tower over the net for the stuff. It's set point for the cards. Kimberly Yi with a dig to Quach, and the sophomore setter dumps it over the net. Lowell takes the first set. Cardinals keep that momentum going into the second. Check out this dangerous sequence. Yi to Quach to Brown, and the overpass is out of bounds. Lowell takes the second set. South Pasadena stays alive to force a fourth set. Alyssa Sakalo splits the block for the Tigers point, but here come the Cardinals. Yi to Quach to Chi down the middle. That one lands Lowell with a comfortable lead. It's match point for the Cardinals. Brown to Quach to Mariko Tanaka. And the Lowell Cardinals are your Division Three state champions. Congratulations, Lowell. We will interview the state champions at the Rikus Center next week, so make sure you tune in for that. Each week, 49ers prep South County Chrysler and U.S. Bank bring us the Coach of the Week Award. This week's Coach of the Week is Monta Vista's Matt Russi. Coach Russi and the Mustangs beat rival San Ramon Valley in the first round of the NCS Division I playoffs. A huge win for Monta Vista, making Coach Russi this week's Coach of the Week. Albany's Construction brings us the Dirty Work play each week. Doing the Dirty Work this week is the Wilcox offensive line here, opening the hole for Paul Rosa to slice through for the game-winning score in overtime last week. The Wilcox O-line down in the trenches and doing the Dirty Work, just like Albany's Construction. Coming up the season with Valley Christian Football as the Warriors try and keep their season alive in the CCS semifinals against St. Ignatius. But first, take a look at our Cupertino Electric Volleyball Power Rankings. I was in pain all the time. Terinia was diagnosed with spine issues from a car crash. The neurosurgery team at Stanford Healthcare came up with a way to ease her pain. Using leading edge imaging along with robotic surgery, doctors corrected Terinia's spinal condition. Stanford is one of the few hospitals in California pioneering this less invasive approach. I don't have words for it, really. It's amazing. When it matters most, patients turn to Stanford Healthcare. Discover more at stanfordhealthcarenow.org. Hi, I'm Greg Meyer, owner of Diablo Motors Auto Sales. Our no-hassle approach makes it fun and easy to buy or sell your next luxury car. We have a great selection of amazing certified pre-owned cars at the best prices anywhere. Why buy new when you can save thousands on one of our finest slightly used cars? 
We'll have you in and out of the store with your new car in as little as 30 minutes. And we handle financing, extended warranties, and we give top dollar for your trade-in, paid for or not. So come see us in San Ramon for a no-hassle deal. Diablo Motors, the nice, honest, non-dealerish car store. For more than 65 years, Cupertino Electric has been delivering power and possibilities. With offices throughout California and project sites throughout the U.S., Cupertino Electric today builds renewable, commercial, utility, and data center projects for some of the most influential companies in the world. Beyond that, we are a people company. We build family, communities, and meaningful careers. Visit CEI.com today or connect with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, or other social sites to see our openings and join our team. We are the Half and Bay High School Marching Band. And you're watching 49ers Cal High Sports Report. Yeah! We are back at Levi Stadium where we continue our series, The Season with Valley Christian Football. It's do or die time as the Warriors advance the Division I semifinals facing St. Ignatius. The Warriors beat the Wildcats 10-0, but this time a loss could mean the end of the season. The season with Valley Christian Football is brought to you by Mike LaBarbera of Terra Commercial Real Estate. The Warriors need just one more win to make it to the CCS Championship game. Raising the belly of the beast. There were days where I barely had sleep, but I had to work more than competition. I can't live like the opposition. Let's get after these guys from the get-go. Impose your will. Okay? Known as a physical football team, let's make sure that we show that we are in fact a physical football team. All right, let's get after these guys from the get-go. Let's go. Line it up. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world right now for our home field. What are these guys right here? They want us? Oh, they want it. They're going to get us tonight, huh? They're going to get us tonight, baby. Bring it on, Brian. Oh. SI driving first. Teddy Buchanan to James Adams. But Will Cuddy meets the ball carrier at the line. Cuddy with 100 tackles on the season. Corey Taylor at midfield hits Jury on Dickey in the end zone and the offense on the board early 7-0 Valley. That's Max Dixon Jr. leading the charge on that sack. Woo! And that's the way to start, baby. That's the way to start right there. Then it's Dom Oliver. Watch out, coming out of nowhere. Look at this, it's gonna be easy. Michael Carini powering into the end zone, 14 nothing Warriors. Wildcats on the board with a Zach Taylor Smith to Jafer Snipes reception, but there's Anthony Madrigal, that's the end of the first half. Okay, we're next blocking, it becomes real simple at that point, all right? So we just need to make sure we communicate. Go. Hey, this is a big drive, y'all. This is a big drive. This is a big drive. We score a touchdown here at the Moore Lives. Let's go. They got nobody out there. They have nobody out there. Junior Jake Ojegbu finds the end zone and Valley goes on top 28 to 7. Out. They go driving down the field. Look at the awesome catch from Danny Ryan. 
where the Valley defense has allowed one touchdown or less to any WCAL team, and it continues tonight. Great season. You guys ought to be very proud of your season. Good job. Good job. Nice shot. Yeah. Congrats, man. Good luck next week. Hey, bud. You had a great year, and the MVP of our league, without a doubt, was you. All right? I mean, honestly, like we've been preaching it all week that it's been starting on the line, and the line's been doing their job up front, and back to be doing everything at the second level. So, honestly, right now we feel like nothing can stop us, you know? I just played on our home field, putting up 28, imposing our will. So, honestly, like we're ready to run it up next game. Just after that win, you know, I think we're feeling all good. I think we finally hit our stride. Um, just as an offensive unit, we came out and we scored first drive. Um, we've been talking about coming out fast, and we uh, finally did. Came out fast and physical, and we just played uh, Valley Christian football. You know, and they said they wanted Valley, and they got Valley tonight. So, can't wait for the uh, championship game next week. We got one left. Our 11th CCS championship game. We've been here 23 years. That's almost 50% of the games we are in a championship. Okay? Let's make sure we do all the work that we can to make sure we have the opportunity to put another plaque on the wall. Okay? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, first and foremost, we come before you and we give thanks. We thank you for the opportunity you put before our team again, as you have every week, and give you the praise for all the things you've given our program. In your name we pray, amen. Amen! Cal High Sports, see that right there? Scoreboard, 28-7, out here on a Friday night, having a good time with all the boys. Let's get ready for next week. So the Warriors advance to the final game and get a chance at their second straight CCS title, but they will have to go through the Sarah Padres. A chance to avenge their only loss. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it should be great. All right, thanks, Rob. Now back to the pool for another NorCal title game. The Akalanas Dons making the trip to San Jose to face Sacred Heart Prep in the NorCal D1 final. Dons get on the board early. Mary Beth Heffelfinger with the pass to Jewel Romer and the Stanford bound senior scores. It's 1-0 Akalanas. Dons on the fast break now. Ava Don Levy heaves it deep to Romer who finds it back the net. It's 2-0 Akalanas after one and looking for more in the second. Don Levy throwing it deep again this time to Heidi Heffelfinger who converts from close range. SHP answers back. Margot Gibbons lobs it over to Ola Sherba, who shoots and scores for the goal. But back come the Dons. Brooke Westfall fires and hits just before the buzzer to keep Akawana's at a 5-1 lead at the half. The Dons continue the attack in the second. Romer over to Mary Beth Heffelfinger, who shoots past the keeper for the goal. Sacred Heart Prep trying to spark a rally, but Ava Don Levy gets one of her 13 saves in the game as Akalanas completes their undefeated season and wins the NorCal Division I championship, their first NorCal title in school history. Invisalign brings us the Bright Smile Award each week, honoring great folks who help out the teams we cover. This week we honor Valley Christian's John Diotti Sr. After he retired, John started volunteering at the barbecue, cooking up tri-tip at the football games as a fundraiser. His sons Brian and John are Valley grads. John has been a fan for 40 years. Great work by John Diotti Sr. Honored with this week's Bright Smile Award. Coming up, our South County Chrysler Game of the Week as the showdown in the NCS as Liberty takes on Pittsburgh. And CCS Division Three action as Burlingame meets Terra Nova. You're watching 49ers Cal High Sports Report. Visit us at vcs.net. Why choose Invisalign over other aligners? Are they comfortable and safe to wear? I asked her doctor for a better alternative to braces, and he said, Only Invisalign aligners are made with smart track technology. Based on years of research, it moves teeth more comfortably and predictably than ordinary aligners. And in many cases, it works faster than braces. So I can develop a custom treatment plan that'll work for each of these smiles. That's why Invisalign aligners have transformed millions of smiles. Invisalign, transforming smiles, changing lives. Devcon Construction is number one in the Bay Area and Silicon Valley because of trust. 95% of our business comes from repeat customers. They know the customer is our top priority. That's why Devcon was the choice for the 49ers Stadium and for the Earthquake Stadium. 
DEFCON was also chosen when outstanding schools like Bellarmine, the Nueva School, and MIDI wanted the very best on time and on budget. Top Bay Area companies know DEFCON is the best choice whether it's new construction or renovation. DEVCON Construction, helping to build the best in Silicon Valley. Tri-County Bank presents a unique brand of service with solutions. A welcoming and listening style of banking with solutions that help improve your financial well-being. With easy access to over 32,000 surcharge-free ATMs, advanced mobile banking, banker support by phone seven days a week, and an extensive community-based branch network. You're never far from a friendly face. It's easy to switch to better banking. Tri-Counties Bank, service with solutions. 49ers Cal High Sports Report is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By South County Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Hyundai. Drive a little, save a lot. By the Rikus Center, where goals and dreams become a reality and by Stanford Healthcare. Back at Levi Stadium for our South County Chrysler game of the week. This week's game is a classic matchup between two of the very best teams in the NCS. The Liberty Lions feature Oregon-bound quarterback Jay Butterfield, who's having another fine season throwing for 2,341 yards this year. But Pittsburgh has a fine quarterback of their own in Jerry Johnson, who's thrown for 2,373 yards this season. Two outstanding quarterbacks, but only one of these seniors will continue their season after this game. It's our South County Chrysler Game of the Week, and Robert was there. Here come the Pittsburgh Pirates as they host Liberty in this NCS D1 semifinal. Liberty rolling early handed to Dury and Bartley, racing along the far sideline, a 40-yard gain. And that leads to this, Jay Butterfield to Cody Muth, a 10-yard touchdown strike. It's a terrific catch by Muth and a 7-0 Liberty Lions lead in the first. But Pittsburgh answers back in the second. Jerry Johnson rolling right and firing deep to the middle of the field to Brian Pierce, who hauls it in. And then later on the same drive, it's Johnson to Pierce again. This one is a five-yard TD strike, and we are tied at seven all. Later in the second period, the Pitt D playing very well all night long, sniffing out the screenplay here as DeMarie Canigan and Pierce get the tackle for a loss. And then later in the second, a beautiful throw by Johnson, hitting James Battle the third in stride for a 40-yard touchdown pass and run and a 14-7 Pitt lead. Pretty music for the Pirates. Pitt driving again in the third, but this one is picked off by Anthony Aroglio in the red zone, and that was big because the Lions score here. Beautiful play action and a perfect throw to the running back, Bartley, and we are tied at 14-all. But not for long. On their next play from scrimmage, Johnson back to throw and again finding James Battle. Another pretty pass, and Battle brings it in. 77 yards, and the Pirates retake the lead, 21 to. 14. Late fourth quarter now, Liberty driving and on fourth down, the pass is thrown into the end zone, but it is picked off by Lamont Fortenberry to seal the win for the Pirates, who advance to the Division I title game next week against De La Salle. Johnson, a huge game for Pitt. We talked with the team right after the game. And here they are for thrilling victory, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Congratulations, guys. Right here with me, Jerry Johnson. Jerry, three touchdowns, 325 yards tonight. Congratulations, you are the MVP of the game. Jerry, what does this mean? What does this win mean for you guys? Uh, coming into this game, uh, preparing for a team that we played in uh, in the league, um, it means a lot to us. Uh, this team right here, this is the bond that we have. We've been executed all week, and then we're just gonna go next week and try to play against them. What was it like for you tonight? Great quarterback on your side and yourself. Great quarterback on their side in. Uh, Jay Butterfield, what was it like uh, out there competing against him? It was, it was good. I was just staying, I was just staying cool. Uh, we knew Butterfield. He's an Oregon commit. It didn't pay us no mind. We just went out there. We just played our game and we just executed. Congratulations! You've had a great season. Great job. Hey. James Battle here had a great game today. Two touchdowns, JB. What was it like out there? Talk me through the the big long touchdown catch, which was a game winning play. It was like I had to put my team because we were struggling, so I had to come through for us. For me, I had to come through and make a big play so we could stay on top and keep our momentum going. Yep, you did that. And Lamont Fortenberry with the interception to close yeah. it out. Talk about talk about the defensive effort tonight. Hey, hey, the defensive effort was nice today. Hey, all I know is that I just had to put the team on my back and just do what I had to do, you know? And with this win 
and that interception. How big of a play was that in your football career? It was a big play. I mean, a big, big play. Very good. Pittsburgh Pirates, a big win tonight over Liberty. Congratulations, Pitt. Terranova Tigers hosting Burling game in the Division III CCS semifinals. First quarter, Jalen Camp setting the tone early, racing down the far sideline, 30 yards for the Tigers. Later that same drive, Camp again, Jalen with a huge night for T Nova. Burling game battles back in the second. Lucas Meredith busting through the line, breaks a tackle, and he is off. 65 yards of the Panthers tie the game at 7-all in the second. Still 7-all in the third as Raphael Bendo heaves it deep to Chase McKnight and Chase comes down with a big gain, but the Tigers would not score on that drive. Later in the third, let's go Camp and again it's Jalen Camp continuing his huge night with a 7-yard run. 14-7, Terranova leading late fourth quarter. Panthers need to score. Jordan Malashis throws a delicious pass to Davon Malashis on fourth down. The Tigers' D comes up big. Tyler Ramos and his friends get the stop, and Terranova wins it to advance to the CCS Division III title game against the Kings Academy next week. Lexus of Stevens Creek presents the Volunteer Award, part of the Lexus of Stevens Creek commitment to promoting volunteerism. This week's Lexus of Stevens Creek Volunteer Award goes to Rachel Grant from Gunn High School. This past summer, Rachel traveled to Botswana to help children in school and aid the villagers with preventing soil erosion in the Akavango Delta. Rachel also proposed ideas to village members on how to solve the human wildlife conflict. Rachel talks about why volunteering is so important to her. Volunteering is so important to me because it, it gives me another community to help out and give back to. Uh, and I love helping out animals, which at the Humane Society and in Botswana, where I volunteered. Um, helping out the villagers and the animals there is really rewarding and um, an overall really inspiring experience. Coming up back to the CCS and a Division II semifinal game with Los Gatos and Sacred Heart Prep. And the story of a McClyman's football star and how he's helping out after a tragedy in his family. We'll meet our U.S. Bank inspirational athlete next. Back at Levi Stadium with a CCS Division II semifinal game, the top-seeded Los Gatos Wildcats come into the game 10-1, the Cats' stellar defense with four shutouts this season. Yeah, Los Gatos taking on Sacred Heart Prep. The Gators playing very well right now with big wins their last two games. Another do-or-die playoff game. This one played at Los Gatos on Friday night. CCSD2 semifinals, the Sacred Heart Prep Gators taking on the Los Gatos Wildcats. Yost Gervin in the gun, boots to his right and finds Adam Garwood in the flat. It's a 12-yard touchdown. The Cats go up 7-0, 10 minutes left in the first. Next Los Gatos possession, Gervin hands it to Garwood. Adam gets a great block from Tyler Shecks Nardre. Stiff arms a defender, trucks another and gets tripped up after 25 yards with a monstrous first down. A few plays later, Garwood with the rock again and muscles across the goal line and the Cats are up 14-0, 5.43 left to go in the first. Following a Sacred Heart Prep field goal, Gervin fires it to Gian Lagerman, perfectly in stride, 35 yards, Los Gatos up 21-3 with 11 minutes left in the half. Now in the fourth quarter, Teddy Purcell dips the play action and rifles it to Wilson Wiesel for the 25-yard catch and throw. 6.25 left in the fourth. Few plays later, Purcell hands it to Tavita Moyamoy for the one-yard TD, and the Gators are within 21-11. to Gators next possession looking to make something happen on fourth down, but Jackson Benjamin is there in the coverage defending the pass, and that'll do it. Los Gatos wins it and will carry on to the section finals next week against Oak Grove. Moran Catholic in its first state appearance as the Wildcats face the Torrey Pines Falcons in the open division. The Wildcats fall behind in the first but stay within reach. It's Bella McGear to Leia LeBoy to Olivia Cooper and the Harvard bound senior gets the point. But Torrey Pines has some big hitters. Bella Chan to Carly Deal to Trinity to Free who slams it down. Falcons take the first by 14. Second set a close one. The Falcons looking to add to their two point lead but Malia Gassaway says not up in here. Marin Catholic rallies and takes a late lead in the second. Juliana Treadway bumps to LeBoy who dumps it over in no man's land for the two point lead. 
But Tori Pines answers back. Megan Kraft to deal two. Maya Satchel in the corner and Satchel lays down the hammer. The Falcons take a two set lead. More Falcons in the third. Chan to deal two. Delaney Maple who crushes it and the Tory Pines Falcons wins the Open Division title in a three set sweep. The program's first state title and congrats to the Falcons. Each week, U.S. Bank brings us stories of inspirational athletes who amaze us. Aubrey, tonight we meet the star wide receiver for the McClymans Warriors, who is having a great season on the field while helping his family recover from a tragedy at home. Ever since he was a freshman, number 13 Davion Sanders has run wild for the McClymans football team. Now a junior, Davion has become one of the top receivers and quarterbacks in the Bay Area, but his success comes with a heavy heart. Last year, Davion lost his mom. So it was really a tragic story. Last year, like a Sunday evening, she went into what they call a thyroid storm. She went into the hospital with food poisoning, like stomach pains, sharp pains and everything. They gave her like morphine and, and she like seven, about 7 p.m. that evening, she went on a cardiac arrest. She coded it probably like 23 times, and she just, she just never recovered. Davion had to grow up in a hurry, helping his now single dad take care of the family at home. I commend my son, man. Like he's, I, I don't know how he does it. Like, because every day, it, it's a fight. He had to help his little sisters get ready for school, and, and has to make sure they get to their destination, then he has to get to school, so. It's, it's hard. But Davion was crushed, even though he didn't show it at home or with his team. Right there, I never seen him break down, and it was kind of hard for me because, you know, I had to watch him because, you know, that's your mom. And, you know, and, and it always hurt. I bring it to the field, just have all that coped up anger, sadness, and I really just like express it on the field with all my catches, all the reps I take, and I mostly, mostly the field and sometimes the weight room. And, like, I just, take all of that aggression and I'll just put it into my sport that I love the most. Davion's dad lost his right foot in a train accident when he was a teenager. Now he suddenly finds himself all alone, raising two girls along with his teenage son. His wife, Davion's mom, is never far from their thoughts. Mama's boy, real mama's boy. I loved her to the death, to the death of me, and if I could switch spots with her, I would, in a snap. She was amazing. She was a ramp agent for Southwest Airlines. So she was just really inspiring, hard worker, amazing energy, great personality. Now Davion uses the memory of his mom to make sure he succeeds on the field and in the classroom. I plan to go to college. Right now, I just I just want to keep pushing to have to have the grades that I want. I have a 3.6, and it's like if I can't get to where I want to be sports-wise, I just want to get there academically and hopefully I can make something of myself. With a 3.6 GPA, Davion has lofty goals for the future. I'd, I'd love to be a neurological surgeon. Really? Yes. Why is that? Because it's just like the brain interests me and I want, to, I want to know how it functions and just the things about it like what brain, like how is a brain tumor, like, call, like how do you cause a brain tumor, what, like what does that all consist of? The McClymans team is deep in the playoffs once again this year. Davion has won two state titles with Mac and looking forward to another state title run this season. The Warriors won the league title again this year, and Davion was a big reason why. You can never count out any MAC player. Yep, they're doing well and hoping mm -hmm. for their third straight state title. I'm sure they'll get it too. Yeah, you're sure? I'm positive. Well, we won't even play the games then. <laughs> well Strong has teamed up with the 49ers with physical therapy and sports rehabilitation centers throughout the Bay Area. Each week, Well Strong brings us concussion prevention tips from their team of outstanding doctors. Here's Dr. Anthony Saglin Benny with this week's tip. Concussions respond best to exposure to stimulus with recovery and re-exposure. When it comes to school and cognitive activity, this means allowing exposure with the ability to rest and recover when and if symptoms are aggravated. This should start very soon after a concussion and after a day or two of rest. But prolonged rest without exposure to brain activity will slow the recovery from the concussion injury. Experienced concussion practitioners are best to help guide students and teachers through this process at various stages of recovery. Coming up, our Diablo Motors NCS Monster Game. It's a Division I volleyball title game. And the Hayward Farmers meet the Los Lomas Knights right here on 49ers Cal High Sports Report. 
I'm gonna be a ballerina. Good, better, Emma. Answer to new. I'm gonna be president. And the winner for president is Emma Williamson. <laughs> I'm gonna start a juice bar. Emma, the numbers are looking really good. You're gonna start a juice bar. At U.S. Bank, we believe hard work works. And for everyone working toward a goal, we are here to help. The legends of the gridiron meet the legends of the road. I'm Debo. Touchdown, Debo Samuel. And I got my roll on it, and no one dies dealing in the world. South County, where they call the fairest place. Come get your roll on just like I did. Drive a little, save a lot. Tell them Debo sent you. South County. Drive a little, save a lot. Tell them Debo sent you. When I first came here, my goal was to be a contributing player on my high school's JV football team. The center actually not only helped me achieve my goals, but exceed even what I initially set out to do. I was able to continue playing football professionally through a lot of the things that I learned at the Riker Center. The Riker Center is a place to help you achieve your goals and then you know tailor it to whatever the person's goals might be. We're back at the NBC Sports Studio with the State Division I Volleyball title game. The Camp Olindo Cougars made it to the final game with a win over Menlo Atherton in the NorCal title game. The Cougars going for a state title, taking on Vista Murrieta at Santiago Canyon College Friday night. It's our Diablo Mutters NCS monster game, and our Kiara Biagini was there. Monster game. Yeah. The 2019 volleyball season comes to an end here at the state championships. I'm here at Santiago Canyon College as Camp Lindo takes on Vista Murrieta of SoCal. The Cougars come into this game with a 27-6 overall record and hope to bring home the program's third state title in school history. Campo features quite the setter hitter duo with UCLA bound setter Audrey Pack and junior middle hitter Aaron Thomas. For the Division I state title, it's Camp Lindo and Vista Murrieta in our Diablo Motors Monster Game. First set, Vista Murrieta takes a 13-5 lead with freshman Claire Little laying down the hammer. But Campo makes a few adjustments on defense. Check out this stuff by Aaron Thomas to tie the set 15 all. And it's set point here for the Cougars. Vista Murrieta on the attack, and Morgan Coolbaugh goes airborne and puts up a wall. Campo takes the first set. Campo looking really strong. It's Ariel Allen to Audrey Pack to Thomas, who buries it for the four-point lead. Deep in the second set, it went back and forth. It's the Broncos' fourth set point, and Lauren Cummings crushes it to tie the match at one set all. Third set was tight. Here's Campo's deadly sequence. Olivia Nutson to Pack to Thomas, point Campo. But Vista Murrieta goes up one set as Chloe Shear bumps, Molly Wilson sets, and Juliet Russell kills. Fourth set, it's match point for the Broncos. Rekha Monteleone to Wilson to Little, and the BYU bound freshman ends the match. Vista Murrieta takes the Division I state title. Great fight by the Cougars who gave it their all. We talked to Audrey Pack after the game about what she'll miss most about her team. I think just all of the relationships with all of my teammates and coaches, like I've made some of my best friends through this program and this program is so special. So just all of those relationships. In Southern California with our monster game, I'm Kiara Biagini, 49ers Cal High Sports Report. The Las Lomas Knights feeling we're right at home against Hayward in the NCS D3 semi. The Knights threatening early in the first. Everett Johnson lobs it to Isaiah Newell who takes it inside the 10. Las Lomas scored a few plays later, 6-0. Las Lomas on the attack again. Johnson drops back and throws to Newell again. And the Oregon State bound senior turns on the Jets 45 yards to the house to give the Knights a 13-0 lead after one. Hayward trying to answer back in the second. Give it to Joshua Jackson who finds a hole and runs it to the 49-yard line for a big game. Hayward looking to keep the drive going, but Sammy Von Felden 
forces the fumble after the catch. Jaden Duffy recovers the loose ball as the Knights take advantage with a field goal and it's 16-0 Knights. Los Lomas extending the lead just before the half. Johnson heaves it deep to a wide open Zach Patterson who walks it in for 6, 23-0 Knights at the half. Much of the same for the Knights in the second half. Johnson with the pass to Elijah Lash who shows off the spin move and Elijah is in for the touchdown. Los Lomas wins it 37-6 to move on to the D3 final next week. Newland Johnson leading the charge for the Knights. Each week, the Harker School celebrates its pursuit of academic excellence with the Scholar Athlete Award. This week, we honor Bellarmine water polo star Matt McKim. Matt is a star in the pool, leading the Bells in scoring this season and is a star in the classroom with a 4.1 GPA. Brought to you by the Harker School, this week Harker congratulates Anna Werich, Harker's first female CCS cross-country champion. She earned the Division IV title on Saturday, beating out 94 other runners. Anna will compete at the state championships now. The girls' team plays six overall. At Harker, preschool through 12th grade students discover their passions. Learn more at harker.org. You can buy entire game videos from all the games featured on the show tonight. Go to 49ERSCALHIGHSPORTS.COM to order. Be sure to follow us on social media at 49ERSCALHIGH on Twitter and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and view all of the highlights and features after we air on Sunday nights. Coming up, the NCS Division 5 semifinal game with Ensenal and De Anza. But first, here is our Cupertino Electric Top 10 Power Rankings for Football. The 49ers Cal High Sports Report is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Cupertino Electric, the company delivering power and possibilities and celebrating student athletes making a positive impact. By Invisalign, winning smiles start here. Learn more at Invisalign.com. And by the Sereno Group, here for good. Hi, I'm Lucy Wiedemeyer, longtime broker with Sereno Group. And my husband, Charlie Wiedemeyer, and I are longtime supporters of high school sports. Hi, I'm Kathleen Pazine with Sereno Group Real Estate, representing Palo Alto and the surrounding communities. I'm proud to support Bay Area High School Sports on the 49er Cal High Sports Report. The amazing season for DeAnza continues this week. The Dons 10-1 with a first-round NCS win last week. Yeah, the Dons taking on the Ensenal Jets. The Jets... The top seed also 10 and 1. The D5 semifinal played at Ensenal Friday night. De Anza and Ensenal in this NCS D5 matchup. First play of the game, David Romero. Ryan holds fires to Keir Stewart, who avoids the first tackle, fights through the next one, and somehow stays up, pushed forward, and takes advantage of the momentum to leave the defense in his dust. Look at that. The Jets striking first. A minute later, Romero Reinholz hands it off to Archie Cole, and Archie forces his way through a horde of Dons. One last leap gets the Jets in great field position. Cole finishes the drive with a big push to score, and the Jets have a 14-point lead. Second quarter now, Ensenal still in control, and this time it's Isaiah Smith who finds a hole and runs it in. The Jets lead at 21-0 at the half. Don't count the Dons out yet. A minute left in the third and Darian Davis hands it to Darrell Willis and he hops and pushes his way into the end zone. De Anza is on the board. And the Dons score again with just over four minutes left in the game. Darian Davis looks and through traffic throws a rocket to Jalen Henderson and we're tied at 21 all. It comes down to the final field goal. John Brindley with time expiring makes the field goal and Ensenal celebrates. The Jets come out on top 24-21 and move on to the NC. Division 5 championship game next week. The Mitty Girls volleyball team had another great season this year. The girls meeting up with our Shan Berries at the Rikus Center this week to talk about it. We're at the Rikus Center in Menlo Park, the premier training facility on the peninsula where goals are achieved. Hey, it's Shan here with the Mitty Girls volleyball team! Yeah! Congratulations, ladies. You guys made it second in the WCAL and went all the way to the NorCal semifinal last game. What were some of your favorite highlights of this season? I really liked going to Las Vegas and playing in the Durango Fall Classic. We got to play a lot of really good teams and making it to CCS Open Finals and NorCal semifinals was really fun. And just coming in and getting better every day was awesome. really fun. And Ryan Savini, we wanted to talk to you and ask you, 
what is it going to be like playing your last organizer volleyball game with this group of girls? Um, it's definitely going to be very bittersweet because throughout the season we just grew very close, like being in the gym together every day and just like we all got very close bonding wise and I think it's just going to be very sad to like see this whole team go. Well, we definitely all know how that goes our senior year, right? Give us some of your team traditions here at uh, Midi. Yeah, so during game days after we practice a little bit right after school then we eat some food and then we go into the locker room and there's always a lot of dancing <laughs> and we always sing one song together before every game and then we run in tap the building the eh, top of the roof and uh -huh. then go in and play what's that one song for you guys oh my god what <laughs> I can't name right now. listen 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 oh my god, is that by Beyonce. Beyonce, yeah. listen. Oh my God, yeah. that's such a good yeah. song. I'm gonna have to come to one of your games and sing that with you guys. <laughs> Give it up again for the Midi Girls Volleyball Team. DGDG.com presents the Be Happy Play each week. This was a play in a game this week that made everybody happy. This week's Be Happy Play goes to the Palo Alto Vikings. Jameer Shepard making his way to the end zone. And then he meets some fans in the back of the end zone who were just as happy. Go to DGDG.com to find out how you can be a happy car buyer. Coming up, it's the Service by Medallion Play of the Week. Some great plays this week. We'll see who gets it next. But first, here's this week's training tip by our good friends at the Rikus Center. Hi, my name's Coach Jack, and today's exercise are monster band walks. Lauren's going to demonstrate. She's going to take a band and put it around her uh, feet and she's gonna pick up her band and hold it in her hands. She's gonna glide, taking a step to her left, keeping her tension on the band, keeping her feet shoulder width apart. She'll take about five steps to her left. After that, she'll come back and come the other way. This is a great exercise to warm up your hips and activate your glutes, and that's Monster Band Walks. The winner of the Service by Medallion Play of the Week gets a medallion swag pack, complete with hat, backpack, and a very cool pair of headphones. Last but not least, a ticket to the end of the season awards banquet right here at Levi's Stadium. Our Wesley Boone counts down the contenders and then he will announce this week's play of the week. Play of the week. Have we got a play of the week list for you? SI Valley, Danny Ryan showing his concentration skills. Doink somehow comes down with it though. Over to Los Gatos Sacred Heart Prep now. Adam Garwood breaking to the sideline, delivering some punishment, plants this defender to the dirt, then says, sit down, young man, rolls over another. What an effort, back to SI Valley. Kavir Baines going full extension with the diving interception. Are you kidding me? How are we topping that? With an all-time effort play, Kier Stewart catches this in the flats. Now let's break this down. One defender hops on for the ride. Stewart won't go down. Another defender comes in the frame. Stewart's still up. There are five defenders around him. He's still on his feet. And that's it. See ya, Stewart. 85 yards later, Kier Stewart, you just won play of the week. That's the play of the week, and that's our 49ers Cal High Sports Report for this week. Thanks for watching. I'm Robert Bronstein. And I'm Aubrey Tolliver. Join us next week. We'll have an exciting show full of section title games. We'll see you then. <laughs>